So the main evolution we bring with this uh, release are aiming at making the creation of web form to drive the process execution a lot easier, meaning that we generate forms based on the data expected by the process, but also give option to visualize the data in readily mode for the users. We also improve the engine performance uh, with some uh, optimization in the in the way the engine process uh, execution of connectors. We update our supported environments to be in line with the currently used and most popular operating system, database version, and so on. Also, we improve our two modules, the Intelligent Continuous Improvement Module, BC, that is our AI modules with some new reports. And we also update the BCD modules to include uh, some option for the new optimization available in the, in the Bonita engine. And last but not least, we have now an offer to have some Bonita hosting in the cloud. So let's have a, have a quick look on the, on the studio here and on the evolution in, uh, in 7.9. Here, what we bring in 7.9 is an evolution in the way we generate uh, forms for um, task in a diagram. So if I open um, a process that got some uh, existing uh, data, and I will uh, show here how we can create uh, the contract here um, when we want to uh, to review, for example, a, lo a loan offer. So first let's add the contract from the data and you will see here the first change we bring is you can choose between um, if we want to instantiate, so create a new business variable, initialize a new business variable, or allows user to edit the attribute of an existing one. So for example, here we want to review a request and potentially uh, let's say edit it and we want to create a new loan offer so here i want to allow the addition of the loan request so i will select the loan request in the edit option and i can choose what i want to to uh, allow for addition so let's say i don't want to only allow the description for addition i don't want to change the request of my customer but maybe fix a few typos in the description for example so I'll click finish here and this will generate the contract for me based on the on the data but the, the main difference is what will happen when I create the form based on this contract so here I can click on the button to to create the the form and the form will um, allow me to input the information uh, the updated the, the description of my request but will also allow me to visualize uh, the data. Okay, so here is the form. So you can see that on my loan request, I request to be able to edit and uh, edit one attribute. So this is a description. And I can see here that uh, this field is not in read only, but the amount is not editable. So here, um, we have a text widget. Also, I take the opportunity here to be in the UI designer to highlight this new uh, menu here that's allowed to switch to a different widget. If you think that it should rather be, I don't know, a text area, for example, to display such value, you can quickly switch to a different kind of widget and keep the settings, uh, the shared settings between the existing widget and the target widget you want to use. A few more updates I can mentioned here um, on the submit button we have a, now a new property to collect the, the status uh, so the http status to know if the operation related to the click of submit button so the execution of a task the start of process or a call of an external rest api for example uh, you can get the http status code and based on that display some error message for example it's what we do now by default, we include this, what we call debug message here, that if the submit of the form 
lead to an error, like a, an error in the validation of the contract, uh, the detail of the error will be directly displayed in the in the forms in the default form we built here. Also in the um, in the studio related to to the contract, um, you can see so not on um, addition but on uh, on creation. So for example, here uh, I will choose instantiate. Uh, so learn request, for example, and click on finish. Here you can see that we have now constraints, uh, constraints sorry, that are uh, generated by default, and I got only one for the two inputs uh, required by my contract. Uh, you can see here my object has two attributes, and actually I get constraints only for a mandatory attribute here. So I will accept empty values only for optional uh, attributes. This allow also if you have only optional attributes to initialize an empty object when you start the process. It might be needed if you uh, collect all the data while uh, executing other tasks in the process.